Hello folks and welcome to this Rangers Review Transfer Deadline Special. The time is 5.36 and we are getting a little bit down towards uh, this midnight deadline. You can see a lot of deals have been done during the day already and Rangers are involved in that, having signed Nicholas Raskin, the Belgian international, uh, under-21 international, um, for a fee we believe to be around about £1.5 to £2 million. Um, is there any more transfers coming in? Well, that's the big question. We're going to go to Joshua Barry for an update in a second. First of all, there have been a lot of rumours flying about, as you'd expect today. I'm going to dispel a couple of them before we get started into, um, into speaking to Josh. The first one is Wigan defender Jack Watmo has been consistently a name that has been getting thrown about, bandied about on WhatsApp today. Um, we are told from contacts within Wigan um, that that deal is not happening. There's nothing in that one. Um, so, you, you know, transfer deadline day, you can never truly rule anything out, but we don't think that one is going to be happening. It's not quite a Derek Clark pie in the sky, but it's definitely a Derek Park Clark pie. He's given us, he's given it the pie. Derek has been working on that one. It's not happening. Uh, I have to say, if it, if it had happened, it would have been a slightly odd one. Not got the greatest CV, only six foot. Um, would have been a bit of a strange one. So, um, you know, but, but it's not happening, so we don't have to worry about it. Uh, in terms of anything else, there's a story doing the rounds that Alex Lowry was about to, um, or, or certainly talking to St Mirren about a deal. I can completely refute that. I can completely rule that out, talking to a contact. Um, that is not something that's going to be happening uh, tonight. So definitely not St Mirren. If, if Lowry is indeed going to leave on loan, it won't be there. Now we know uh, Michael Beale was talking about his future. Uh, it was a really interesting quotes that came out this morning, Joshua. Do you think um, Alex Lowry would be benefited by going away to another ch premiership club? Do you think that uh, he, he needs to go to somewhere in Scotland or do you think it's more likely he would go abroad or, or, or down south? Yeah, well, I, I guess starting with um, Rask and Johnny, it's it's a really exciting signing. Um, obviously, as, as you say, Beals floated the idea of three and four in this window. So I think uh, until that number has been hit, people are always going to um, want more naturally, want more players to come in. We know that the focus from Beal has been on getting starters in this window. Um, there's been multiple quotes that have come out um, when he's reiterated the need for starters to not have players who come in in the short term. He said that may, might um, make himself or the fans feel good, but it's not going to benefit him over the long term. Um, Raskin and, and Cantwell both fit that model because... They're players who arrive at a good age and they're players who arrive on long-term contracts. They're not going to be here for the short term. If you take a player like Cantwell, um, even though he's had a difficult couple of years, it's not like you're just getting him for a, a six-month loan deal. You've got him up here um, on, a, on a strong contract. And it's the same with Nic uh, Nicholas Raskin. Beal said himself in um, the, the Rangers press release that this, this just went out and is obviously on Twitter that this is a player that the club have tracked for a long time. Um, I, I know that Beal is really, really happy with the Raskin deal. Um, he's a player who he feels he can make a significant impact on the squad in that box-to-box -box midfield role. I think it's a player of a uh, profile of player that Rangers have needed for a long time. So I think Rangers' transfer window, Johnny, was always going to be dictated by the fact that they couldn't rush into deals that maybe in the short term would help, but wouldn't over the long term. I guess a sweet spot is, is getting players that can come in now and, and make an impact now on the starting eleven, but also um, fit that long term model, which um, I, I think we've got. They've got um, with those two players. We'll get to speak a little bit more about Raskin, but um, he's a player that uh, I'm, I'm really excited by. I think he'll fit into that midfield well. He'll be a player that you can build that midfield around, and as a player that. Rangers have needed for for quite some time in that position. And on the topic of Alex Lowry, uh, I mean, Beal didn't rule it out yesterday. I asked him about James Sands um, directly because he said he kind of left that door open to players on loan potentially. Um, uh, I think that the quote he said was players who are on loan potentially going back early. Uh, Sands is the only one that fits that mould because obviously Tillman isn't going to go back um, early. Uh, Beal said, I think the, the quote was that 
his um, office had been like a doctor's office that morning with people wanting to come in and speak about their future. So based on his comments, I guess you can't rule uh, anything else happening out because, uh, in his words, the goal uh, goalposts could move. Um, but yeah, the, the Raskin deal, really exciting. And, and, and Lowry, I guess it depends on what Bill said yesterday, that the right club and the right manager. You don't want Alex Lowry, I'd imagine, going to play a, a type of football or that, that's not going to develop him. If you could get a manager who's going to get the best out of him for six months, I think we've got to the point where he needs football. I was of the opinion at the start of the window that alone maybe wasn't the best because it would allow him to work with Beal in training. And, and Beal's spoken about training every time he's spoken about Lowry in the last month, uh, going back to the quote about earning his place and would your teammates pick you based on uh, training. But I think over the last few days, the the option of a loan has certainly been muted a little bit more by the manager. So maybe one to, to keep an eye on um, before the window closes tonight, again, based on uh, what Bill was saying yesterday. Yeah, I absolutely think Alex Lowry needs to go out on loan, uh, Josh. I'm a big believer that young players need game time to reach their potential. We've got a boy sitting there at Rangers who's got enormous potential, but he maybe has to work on a few aspects of his game. Michael Beale was quite quiet, I thought, with uh, his comments about... Um, what uh, Lowry needs to work on. He was, he was quite pointed in that regard. And uh, Lowry, the player himself, will know what he needs to do better than anyone, but he just needs to screw his head down. He's got all the talent in the world. I don't want to see Alex Lowry becoming another one of these Scottish lads who is technically extremely gifted, but doesn't have the graft, the commitment um, to take his game forward to the next level. We all know to be an elite player nowadays, you absolutely need that steely streak, that sense of absolute righteous indignation um, when it comes to um, defending your right to live your life like a 24-hour athlete. You see that in Cristiano Ronaldo, and, and that's something I think if you're going to make it to Premier League level, you need to have that in you. If you don't, you won't make it that far. So hopefully he can, he can either stay at Rangers and develop, or he can go out and, and get games, but but Either way, he, he does need to play. That's That seems to me to be absolutely obvious. Got a comment here from Chris Hutton. The boy from Fulham linked us has just terminated his contract there. Uh, that player's name is Josh Onoma. He is a 25-year-old midfielder um, and, and someone who's played 76 times for Fulham. That's one, I think, if, it, if it's something Rangers are interested in, there's no rush on that, Josh. So it's not something that would be you're trying to, to make sure they can get over the line. But any move for a midfielder now after having two come in, when you already have quite a few options in that area, to me just doesn't necessarily seem like something that the Rangers would be keen to do. I mean, Michael Beale is very, very happy with that midfield as it stands. I think he's very happy with the business, as you've said, that's come in. So going out to get a lad there to, to add more bodies it doesn't strike me as one that that would be a key priority, but perhaps I'm wrong. Perhaps he's a player that would be that would be welcomed. Yeah, and and things can change, can't they? I can't remember the name the the player that uh, Tottenham were after earlier. It was Everton were after earlier in the window that went to Tottenham. Um, that the forward things can change so quickly. And um, Buell himself said yesterday that at the very end of his broadcast presser that. Um, there's a couple of really interesting, effectively irons in the fire. Is something that. He's not ruled out throughout the whole process, um, so I, I'm, I'm reluctant to, I guess, be drawn on um, on any of that, Johnny, because you just don't know. And, and Beale, if Beale isn't closing it off, then I don't think uh, anyone else should. Um, but Raskin and, and and Cantwell, if Rangers' window is to end with that, then I think it will be a really positive one, and it fits what he said at the start of the window. Um, of players that are going to come in and be starters, players that are going to turn the dial up um, in the building and, um, and and drive that competition, especially with the likes of, of Hadji coming back in. Um, I, I think Raskin, getting Raskin, um, because he's been linked for so long, you, you get to the final day of the window and, and people have heard about him for so long, that shouldn't take away from just how exciting, in, in my opinion, a deal this is, Johnny. This is a player who I think would cost a lot more if he was if he was under contract. He's a player who I know had a lot of options around Europe and there was um, other options for him to go elsewhere, but but he's picked Rangers. Um, and, and, and as I said <coughs> a few minutes ago, Michael Beale was speaking about him in glowing terms yesterday and at his press conference um, last week. If you put him alongside Campwell, um, it, it's a really... 
promising uh, January transfer window. We know Bill wants more players because he said it um, at the weekend when he was speaking about a goalkeeper. He was speaking about a number nine uh, yesterday, but he said he doesn't think he will be available uh, and, until the summer. Uh, so unless that changes, that's um, what will happen. Um, but yeah, m moving parts and, and nothing has, I guess, epitomised that more than the manager's comments throughout this uh, January window. Yeah, the clubs linked to Nicholas Raskin in the past few days have been Bruges, Marseille, Galatasaray, and Syria. Ah, uh, Syria, 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 uh, Syria yeah. um, league leaders Napoli, which you'd have to imagine if they had actually come in and formed up their interest, that would have been a difficult one for the lad to turn down. Um, given I think they're thirteen points clear at the top of the Italian league right now, but um, it does show if they've got him on their uh, watch list just quite how good this lad has the potential to be. And, of course, we can't forget that he's just a young kid at 21. You know, there's a, there's a lot yeah. of growing to do. And he's had a lot of football already. So he should really be a signing the fans that are very excited about. I know I am. I think it can transform that midfield, having somebody who can move the ball quickly through the thirds from deep. That's something Rangers have been crying out for. We thought Rangers had found the answer with Joey Veerman. It didn't come off. But it looks like to me that, that Raskin is a player who can do that. Now, we'll go into a bit more detail, but I'm going to take a few questions before we do, Josh. I'm cognizant of these people who are, who are asking um, and want things answered. So we're going to go to ASMR Colino. He's saying, I'm reading no more signings until the summer. Any info, Derek? Well, I'm Johnny. Uh, <laughs> Josh is opposite me. Derek is elsewhere. But who we knows, can see that it looks at this point, ASMR, that there will not be any more signings, but certainly on transfer deadline day, you never want to say never. But uh, at the moment, that certainly looks like it's it's the case at Rangers. Um, it looks like they're very happy with the squad. Michael Beale um, has got two guys who are absolutely high on his list. Um, we're talking about in um, Todd Cantwell, a player that only a few years ago has been linked with £30 million moves. And then Nicholas Raskin, a guy who is worth significantly more, and Rangers will only be able to get able to get for the price that they did, because he only had six months left on his deal. Um, so yeah, we don't think there's going to be any more, but you never know. You can't discount it. It's certainly not going to be the defender whose name has been uh, doing the rounds from Wigan. Um, I'm just trying to find uh, his name because I can't remember it off the top of my head. Jack Watmore, a guy who I'd never heard of until today, so that'll be why um, I can't remember it. But that's not happening, according to our sources down south. Pete Lawrence saying, Raskin, yeehaw, got a good feeling about this lad. I think we all do. Um, someone mentioning that Lafferty, Kyle Lafferty, has been freed by Kilmarnock. Bit of a strange one, that one, Josh. They, they stayed with him. They they kept him going at the club through that. I think it was a ten game ban, and then we get to the transfer window and he, and off he pops. It's just a, just a strange one because you'd have thought, looking at that Kelly squad in terms of the, the players they have in there, Kyle Laffer, even at 33, 34, whatever he is, is still someone who can find the back of the net and always does the business in the big games. So I'm for one quite shocked at that. Certainly. Would uh, would say that he won't be back at Rangers, but but nonetheless, I think from for, from Kelly's point of view, that's a, that's a strange one. Yeah, it is a, it is a strange one. Um, I I don't think he'll be back at Rangers for a third time. I think that that ship has sailed, Johnny. Um, but uh, yeah, why do we talk about Raskin in a bit more detail? Because I've not got any I've not got any Lafferty analysis up my sleeve for you. Not since yes, he's not okay. Since well, before you, let's just take on a couple of questions before. I, so don't keep your powder dry, Josh. Keep it, yeah. keep it dry, yeah. keep it dry. Okay. Um, I'm getting slaughtered here. Um, I don't know if you were on, Josh, but the other day I described Raskin as diminutive, which okay. he is not. He is uh, five foot nine and a half or five foot nine three quarters, close to five foot ten. Therefore, not diminutive. Although he may be diminutive to us. Given your six foot four, now. he's not. Yeah, he's not. He's not huge, um, but he, he has quite a low center of gravity. Um, so, I mean. yeah, but but he, um, yeah, he he. It's always hard to actually find out <laughs> players' height because quite often the, there's, um, it's not something that's um, you always get the same result for if you search on different places, transfer market and Y scout. But yeah, he's not absolutely huge, um, but he can hold his own really strong. Um, winning the ball back and getting his body in and, and, and being aggressive and using it well, but also 
um, on the opposite opposite side of that, he's quite hard to shift off the ball himself because of that. So um, yeah, good good low center of gravity, a strong ball carrier. Another one here from the Bricky seventy eight. Hi guys, Mick Beale and hinted that he was keeping tabs on a striker who's out of contract in the summer. That could be Ollie McBurney. Any thoughts now? Well, I think Ollie McBurney's talked in the past about meeting Stephen Gerrard over a potential loan move to Ibrox back in 2018, the summer ahead of Stephen Gerrard's first um, first knockings at the club. Uh, he's a Rangers fan. He's very vocal about that on social media. Uh, he's a Scotland international and he knows how to find the net in uh, English Championship, that's for sure. He's a big focal point, um, a guy who can hold the ball up. What do you make of him, Josh? Have you seen much of Josh? Uh, have you seen much of um, Ollie McBurney? And do you think he's a player that could potentially add something in the summer? But we're not saying obviously that there's any there's any link there. That's that certainly not been reported. But um, just to to answer the Bricky's point, the the tone of Beale's um, answer, or I don't think he was even asked about it. But when he was speaking about the striker, it sounded to me like it was someone who maybe wasn't on the radar, who wasn't a conventionally linked uh, player to, to Rangers, someone whose name does the rounds like a McBurney or or a Nisbet or any of the above because of the way he spoke about it. Now, you know, we have to take what Beal says, I think, sometimes with a pinch of salt because I think he knows what he's doing um, and that's not criticism. I think managers should um, obviously protect their interests and, and try and keep people guessing to a degree, even if he is uh, pretty honest at points. Um, McBurney... Is obviously, as you say, scored a lot of goals at championship level. The last game I watched of him was between uh, Sheffield United and Burnley earlier in the season. I think it was a 5 2 game. Um, he scored from a, I think he scored from a set piece at the weekend as well. It might have, might have been the weekend before in the FA Cup, McBurney. Um, but I've not watched, uh, not watched a lot of them. I think the profile of player that Rangers will look for, working on the presumption that Alfredo Morelos doesn't renew his contract, which obviously at time of time of speaking, we don't think he has, Johnny. Um, they need a player. Rangers played 50 passes into Morelos at the weekend, attempted 50 passes into him. Um, Cholak's averaged 14 passes in the, the Premiership this season. They need a player who's going to be able to knit together attacks and move defences in that way. If McBurney is able to do that, then maybe he falls into that category. But I don't see them bringing in another player um in the same mould of a Cholak or even a Sakala, who's a wide player, but he's a goal scorer, who is very good at finding the back of the net. But I thought it was interesting that um, Michael Beale specifically pointed out and went out of his way to point out that Sakala can play as a number nine. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I, I don't know if he was speaking about that um, regarding playing um, uh, Sakala through the middle. I think what he was saying is, and it's something that we've spoken about before, I think you can categorise Beale's team in, in four kind of compartments. The defence, the, the midfield, so if you want to take Raskin, Kamara, um, Lundstrom and, and Jack as the deep line midfielders, then the attacking midfielders, Kent, uh, Tillman, um, Cantwell, Hadji, and then the goal scorers. Sometimes you'll play with three attacking midfielders as he did at the weekend. Mainly, Beal's played with two goal scorers. He hasn't been able to do it with Cholak and, and Morelos, which we all thought before he came in he would do and he planned to do, we know, because he said after the, the opening win against Hibbs that he was going to do that. Sakala has been that player and he's done that really well for him. I'd be surprised if he plays Sakala with his kind of as a kind of back to goal number nine, because I think he's seen it Ross County away. I don't think that brings out the best in him. Uh, but but he is a goal scorer, and that's why I think it's more helpful to think of uh, any football formation or especially something like Beals, which is quite fluid, speaking about it in terms of roles rather than positions. We've seen it the weekend, Kent Tillman and, and Cantwell in particular, that they don't really have a position. They might off the ball, but they're not restricted in where they move. And, and I think that extends to the conversation around goal scorers and not as well. Beal did say he might start Cholak and Morelos up top together. Uh, tomorrow, I'll be intrigued to see how that works, purely because it's something that's been spoken about since the start of the season. Um, I just think that Sakala's pace as well, especially if you're playing away from home, gives you a slightly different threat. But I think he wants to play with as many goal scorers <laughs> as he can, and, and Sakala's given him that option so far because he can also uh, play off one of the sides. Uh, Craig McFarlane saying, what do you think of the boy Daniel Phillips for St. Johnson? He's only 21, strong, aggressive, quick and comfortable in the ball. Wouldn't mind him at Ibrox. I think he could be a valuable young player and impressed me when we played them. Craig, you're my namesake and therefore you talk sense. I thought he was excellent at the weekend. I'm not saying 
he's necessarily good enough for Rangers, but I, 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 it was noticeable the the joy he was getting in that central midfield area. Very very impressive performance and. By a mile, the best St. Johnson player. Uh, but, yeah, definitely one I think I would be keeping tabs on, given his age, his physical profile, and his engine. I, he was he, he really did impress me too. So uh, we must be related because it was exactly what I was thinking when uh, I was uh, driving home about, about just how impressive he had been throughout that game. Um, so we've got a number of comments coming in uh, on top of this. Um, does Raskin get anywhere near the squad tomorrow, Johnny? I would not be surprised if he went straight in, Josh. Really? Uh, straight I in? Think, I think he'd be straight into the squad, whether or not he'll be or straight I thought he meant the team. I was thinking that's no, no. confident. I think he'll be straight um, into the squad, but whether or not he'll play straight into the team, I, I think that would be a big move. I mean, Cantwell did, but Cantwell had a week of training with, uh, yeah. with his colleagues. So, And it's a um, different game. It's a different game going away to Tyne Castle um, compared to, to a home game uh, against anyone, uh, I, I guess, uh, Ibrox. I'd be surprised if he starts, but I don't think it's going to be a player who takes two months to, to get his first start whatsoever. I think it will be soon. I guess it depends on his physical condition. Like Cantwell said, he, he was physically fit, but he still needs to build up his, his match fitness. I thought you saw that slightly in the second half, uh, even if he did play that that pass for, for the goal. Um, so yeah, I'd be surprised if the, if he's in the starting 11, but I think the plan will be to, to get him in as quickly as possible because that's why... Rangers have paid the money to get him here early so he can make an impact between now and the end of the season. Headkeeper saying, the Beal effect, um, Kent, Cantwell, Raskin, Tillman, Lawrence, Hadji, technically superior to the other lot. I presume he's talking about Celtic. Let's hope they stay fit. Now, see when you, you, read, you, you read that out, Josh, Kent, Cantwell, Raskin, Tillman, Lawrence, mm -hmm. that's a very talented group of players there. And, and he's right about the technical qualities. I mean, if you can keep all those guys fit, all of a sudden Rangers who have struggled to break down a low block in the last 18 to eighteen months to two, two years, you can't imagine that's going to be much of a problem long term because the mix of skill sets you have in there, you know, you, the physicality of Tillman and Lawrence, the, the, the guile of Kent and Cantwell, the pace of Kent, the um, ability of, of Hadji to get on the end of things, um, the ability of Hadji to to take free kicks, the um, Tillman's quality in the air, There's Lawrence's ability to ping one in from 25, 30 yards. You know, you've got so many options in that lot, haven't you? Oh, yeah, real variety, and that's what Beal wants. Uh, he wants different players to be able to, to mix it up and give the opposition um, different problems. It's something he's spoken about ever since he came uh, back in the door. You've got certainties that will start, like Kent and Tillman at the moment, but then you have... Someone like Hadji and, and Cantwell will bring something different to Sakala. You even have someone like Scott Wright, who's not going to start games, but has made an impact off the bench. That's what you need from a squad. And I think that's what the likes of, of Wright or someone who is a squad player was brought in to do. Um, and the competition obviously only increases ahead of him. Alex Lowry, as we, we referenced before, also gives you um, something uh, different in that position as well. So I, I think the squad looks... Um, Pretty healthy. I think obviously it looks healthier coming out of January than it did going in, not least because there's a lot of players coming back from injury. Beal confirmed uh, yesterday that, that Roof's going to be back in training um, next week, which is ahead of schedule. Obviously, you've now got Cholak seems to have overcome the injury issues that had um, hampered his two or three months under Beal. Beal said that Cholak's actually only been able to take part in about 30% of the training sessions so far, which... I think contextualizes the fact the argument that that Beal doesn't like him or isn't going to play him. He's he's not really had a chance to so far, and Trollac hasn't really had a chance to impress him. So I think he needs to have a a clean slate um, uh, under under the new manager to see how he can he can play in this new system. Lots of names floating about in the comments, Josh. As you can imagine, transfer deadline day madness taking hold. Lawrence Shanklin would score forty for us, says Ross Peacock. I actually don't disagree with that. I think Ross. Uh, I think Lawrence Shankland uh, would score a lot of goals, so I think Ross is right. Um, he is a good player, but I don't think it's going to be happening today. Um, Josh Maja is another one people are talking about. Um, plays at Bordeaux, was an excellent youngster coming through with Sunderland. People will remember him uh, being very prominent in the second season of the documentary, Sunderland Till I Die, and, and one that's been linked with Rangers in the past. Again, don't think that's happening today. Our information is that there won't be um, any more incomings at Rangers um, today, but you never know. You never know what can happen. 
never rule anything out, but as it stands, unless something changes, don't think any more players are going to be coming in. So, Josh, I'm going to kind of hand over to you to discuss a little bit more about uh, Raskin because I think there's been a number of um, of people who have been very, very excited about Nicholas Raskin, um, and you are one of them. So, so do you want to just talk me through what it is and why it is you are quite so all in on this transfer because you really, really do think this could be a game changer, don't you? Yeah, no, I'll, um, we've got a, a, a piece which I'm going to put in the comment section, Johnny. I should have put a link in the description, but I totally forgot. I'll do that after. It's on our website. It's on our Twitter uh, pages as well. And, and it's a, a bit of a detailed look at Raskin. And, and hopefully, it, if you read it, it gives you an idea of the type of player that the Rangers are recruiting. It's uh, obviously what we like to do with, with players or linked players to give an idea of um, the type of player that Rangers are, are signing and, and not just kind of information surrounding them. Um, so I'll just pull up a few graphs and if anyone um, sees a graph and, and has a bad reaction to it, hopefully I'll try and uh, speak them through it as to why it's useful. This is his heat mark from this season, Johnny. I don't know if you can take away that. Um, I can, yes. Yeah. Good luck to me. Great, Anna. People know how people know to, to subscribe to the YouTube. This is really basic, but it's just showing where he is active on the pitch. Um, Raskin, and we'll come on to this with, with one or two graphics, Raskin is not a midfielder who's just going to sit uh, behind the ball um, and always circulate it. He likes to play forwards quickly. He's aggressive. He thinks forward. He takes risks. And again, we'll come on to that, but I think that's a real positive. Be also what you'll see him do often. And again, we'll have to see how this molds over to the Scottish Premiership where the space isn't going to always be there um, for him to, to make these moves, but he'll run beyond quite a lot. And, and I'll pull up a, a graphic here, Johnny, which I think shows this um, quite well. This is, um, you see, if you, if, if you can see the red outlined uh, arrow compared to the white outlined arrow, what this is, is, is showing that, and Raskin's marked by a player here, he's not a midfielder who's always going to come and offer a, a pass behind the ball, who's always going to try and support his team that way, but he has the ability and, and the engine and and the pace to, to run beyond as well. And I think that's a really interesting element because Rangers need a, a deep midfielder who's going to contribute to the attack. They don't just need a player who's going to break things up, and Raskin does, and again, we'll come on to that as well. But they need someone who's going to contribute to the attack. And um, if you lead that onto his radar, Johnny, and I'm going to take you through the numbers of this, there's a few three, uh, a few key things Sorry, I want to outline. Firstly, his pass and accuracy of 83%. That might be deemed low for a player in his position for context. Stephen Davis in the title winning, last title winning season, um, his passing accuracy was 89%. I think this is a positive because I think it shows that Raskin likes to take a risk. He likes to play a ball over distance. He wants to play forwards quickly. My, my guess would be it's easier to coach a player to play the odd safe pass as opposed to coach a player to take risks and try and break lines, which is, a I think, a positive for Rangers. Because if you look at that midfield at the moment, I don't think they've got a player who's going to do that. I think Lundstrom and, and Jack and Kamara are maybe all complementers. Certainly Kamara, I think, fits that profile. I think Raskin someone who can build the midfield around. His expected goal assisted of 0 0.2 per 90 is the 97th uh, percentile for midfielders in the Belgian top flight this season. What that means is for players playing in his position, he's one of the most creative in terms of laying on <coughs> uh, directly for his teammates. Why does that matter? I think it shows that um, Raskin isn't just a facilitator. He isn't just someone who wins the ball back and passes it on to the creative players. Uh, tying into those runs I was mentioning a minute ago, he's able to carry the ball directly, join the attack, play the type of pass that creates a shot for his teammate. And again, that's what I think you need at the base of midfield if you're playing in a team that's as ball dominant. Um, as Rangers, he makes a successful dribble a game, which again, might not seem like a lot, but if you're playing from the base of midfield, he has the ability to do that. And the two other things, pressure regains and possession adjusted tackles, how he's winning the ball back. Um, and uh, specifically on the pressure, again, in the 97 and 96th percentile ratings for that. He, he's so good at this, Johnny, and I'll, I'll pull up another graph here, which I think um, goes some way to showing this. Something that Raskin often does, and I think this is aided by his pace, he gets into positions like this, and when you see the, the pass being played into an opposition player, he doesn't always pressurise them right away. 
he'll base where he's intercepting, which is the white line, um, off of the opponent's first touch. And, and he's really clever at this and he gets his body in and and he's able to win the ball back in, in most situations. And, and that lends itself to, to him being hard to, to shift off the ball um, the other way around. So I think to summarise him, he's a player who's really good at winning the ball back. He's quick and that can be used on and off the ball. But as well as winning the ball back, he's happy contributing to the attack. He takes risks. He's able to play a forward pass and carry the ball forward. So what Rangers need, I think, at the base of midfield is someone who's going to be able to facilitate the attack. And it's interesting that Beal said yesterday he's also a player who could play as number eight because I think that also shows um, his attacking credentials as well. So if you want to read uh, more of that, there's uh, a link in the comments. I'm going to put a link in the description as well and on our website. And um, yeah, hopefully that gives you a bit more of an idea on the type of player that Raskin is specifically before uh, we see him in a, a Rangers shirt. Well, I'm very... I'm very, very excited, Josh. I thought my, my mic wasn't on there because I've been coughing. I've got this cough. I don't know if this is going around, Josh, but not to me. My wife's got it. My kids got it. I've got it. I just I've been coughing all day. It's bloody horrible. Mm -hmm. um, a few more uh, questions. A number have come in. Johnny, can you clear up um, this? It, it was an offer made for Sakala today, Jimmy. I've not heard anything about an offer for um, Fashion Sakala. I know that he's respected and liked by Rangers and tough to be a bloody good offer for the club to accept it. It's as simple as that. So uh, certainly at this stage in the window, it would need to be big, big money for Fashion Sakala. You'd be surprised. Yeah, I mean, Sakala's got the second most uh, goal involvements behind Morelos since Beal came in. Um, I think only now is he getting a consistent run of games and, and only now is he kind of building himself, I guess, a reputation outside of the the one that existed for the first 18 months of his Rangers career, which was that he had some positives, but those positives didn't outweigh the negatives. I think he's kind of flipped that entirely and, and is now working under a manager in Beal who's, who's got the best out of him. Um, so I, I think Sakala will, will remain a part of Beal's plans next season. I don't think he's always going to be the one that starts. You saw that with Cantwell at the weekend, although Beal did say after that, um, that was to do with personal reasons, uh, as outlined in his press conference. But for, for what he gives you in terms of a, a goal return and what we've seen so far on the Beal, I imagine he'll definitely be someone that the, the manager will want to keep uh, beyond this window and, and beyond the summer as well. Uh, comment here from uh, TG is home. Listen, Johnny, Nesbitt by tonight. That's an interesting one, Josh. We've discussed it to death. But here's the thing. Um, I've heard different things about this, but I mean, told pretty firmly that Rangers have no interest. Now, I think there was an interest at one point. How detailed that was and how far it went, um, I don't know. But certainly, I think Nesbitt was gettable this window. You saw that, that Millwall came in with an offer and that, that that was essentially tied up, apart from the fact the player decided he didn't want to go. So I think if Rangers had wanted to make that happen, they could have. And uh, you've got Alfredo Morelos there, you've got Antonio Cholak there, and you've got Kemar Roof there. The thing that we're always getting told by Michael Beale in press conferences is, is about young Scottish players. Would they come in and play? I like Nisbet. I think he's a, he's a good player, but would he play ahead of any of those? Are you going to leave no. Alfredo Morelos on the bench for, 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 for Nisbet? I, I, I just don't think you are at the moment. But, you know, I, I, I respect people. Uh, who have a different opinion because his goal scoring record has been excellent since he came back from injury. Yeah, it has been. But again, if you take Beal at his word, uh, and, and sometimes I think you have to take what he says with a pinch of salt. Um, he said yesterday, whenever the last press conference was, there's been a lot. Would any players outside of the old firm come and start ahead of uh, Cholak, Griffin and Morelos? Um, so I, I guess there's your answer for you. I, I'm more inclined just Again, not basing off this off any uh, knowledge uh, or interest, but hypothetically, I'd be more inclined to uh, bring in a player um, of Nis bringing in Nisbet than, than Shankland. But um, I, I think Rangers' number nine target, as Beal said yesterday, will be brought in in the summer. Again, to take Beal at face value with what he said, he has a specific player in mind, and he doesn't think he'll be available now, but he will in the summer. So, I guess we'll have to bide our time and, and wait and see who that is. Yeah, TG is home again. I'm going to have to put this up. It's su such a good comment, even though he's already had one. I'm going to have to put a second one. He's just joined up on a 12-month subscription free transfer. Mm -hmm. Guys, if you're wanting to subscribe to the Rangers Review, if you're thinking about it, 
it is an absolutely outstanding time. For just a pound, you get your next four months coverage free. That gives you complete access to the website. There's detailed content on there about Rangers every day, and you help obviously support this free video that we do. Now, um, without your subscriptions, we couldn't do this. So we know you don't have to pay for it directly, but if you can go on the website and subscribe, it's just a pound, you can cancel at any time. That would be a huge, huge help to support what we do. Alternatively, if you really want to get behind us, we have got a 45% discount at the moment on an annual subscription. It takes it down to just 19 quid a year. It's a one-off upfront payment of 19 pounds, and then you won't pay anything again for another year. Again, you can cancel it at any time. These things are a massive, massive support to us to help us do what we do. And uh, if you look at the price of a paper nowadays, Josh, if I went and bought a Herald or a, or a Times, it would be a couple of quid. So £19 for an entire year yeah. is really, really good value. And, and listen, guys, the only way that we can get people who are whose full-time job it is to cover the club, who can get to press conferences, who can go away to European games, who can do all that, is to support them via subscription. It's just the way that things are going uh, in the, the current lands, uh, landscape. And there's many, many good people doing Rangers content. We like to think we're part of that. And if you want to uh, support us and if you want to help us, please go on and do that. That would be a huge boon. Anything you want to say about that, Josh? Yeah, no, the link to that is in the, the description. Echo what you say. Um, just uh, thanks to the people that uh, tune in and, and listen to us so we're not speaking to ourselves. And if you want to support us, that's the best way to do it. We try to... Um, cover the club in, in as I guess as met from as many angles as possible. Obviously, we do a lot of tactical stuff, a lot of data stuff. Um, we, we which you'll see on our Twitter page as well. Um, and we're only trying to, to increase our coverage uh, kind of every week. And the, the more subscribers that we have, um, the, the more that helps. And we'll do two videos. This is a second video today. Um, although we weren't on this morning, Johnny. So um, yeah. Just thanks to everyone does subscribe. It really helps. And yeah, the link's in the description if you want to do that. Josh, um, we've got David Kerr saying a brilliant analysis, Josh, are there Thank for you, your comments about Raskin. Uh, I obviously echo that sentiment. Well done, young man. But um, nice to see you getting some love in the comments there. N normally, it's me getting slaughtered and you getting love. So it's good to see it. nothing has changed. Um, yeah, so listen. We, we've got um, we've got a number of um, of people coming in with uh, I think kind of like their uh, and their ideas of who might be coming in on the tra transfer window, Josh. But but I think from the point of view of of the squad as it stands right now, you've got to say that we all felt that midfield was a problem. That's kind of been addressed. If you look at the goalkeeper thing, I don't think it would be a there's no doubt that's an issue, but I don't think it's a good use of money to go in and deal with that right now. The defence, I think, is solid. John Souter gets back. It's looking very solid. Leon King being part of that, I think, is good. And, you know, if Philip Hollander can become part of this, then all the better. We know that middle to front in that kind of number 10 type role, there's absolutely reams of options and three good strikers up top. So I have to say I'm pretty happy with how this squad's looking. I think everything is so much easier when um, if you're a manager, if you're a sporting director, if you're a chairman, when you're winning. And that is an obvious thing to say, but Rangers needed to get feeling, they needed to get a few results to build them up. And they're now, what, 10 games unbeaten, I think nine wins in that. Uh, and then things start to look healthier. You get Kent in a better place, Morelos, even though questions still remain about him he's in a better place and you're right Johnny midfield was the area that Rangers didn't really strengthen as much in the summer particularly at the base of midfield and I think I've, I've paid the price for that throughout the, the first half of the season I along with I'm pretty sure everyone else who, who's watching thinks that the goalkeeping position should have been addressed in the summer it's not again I think Rangers have have paid the price for that but this window, I think, was about them getting in players who could make an impact now, uh, but make an impact going forward. Again, to to reiterate what Michael Beale said, he wants players who are exciting now and signing to excite the support, um, but also are going to be exciting in the future. I think if you compare it to last January, it shows that the squad's in a different place. Um, this time last year, it was obviously Aaron Ramsey and Ahmed Diallo. Can't believe that was a year ago because it, it, it really doesn't feel like that. Um, I think this is a squad that's at the start of... of 
or is in the middle of a rebuild, refresh, call or whatever you want to. If you take into consideration that you hopefully keep Malik Tillman in the summer, hopefully you get Ryan Kent on a new contract. Again, that picture looks uh, starts to look a lot rosier because Rangers, even though that the, the gap remains at nine points, they have two cups, which they have a, a fair a fighter's chance of winning. They have to keep the pressure on in the league because all it takes is is one result elsewhere. And, and suddenly, if you've not kept the pace, you'd be kicking yourself. And, and I think that that is what those two transfers um, will offer you. Raskin is a player who, um, at 21, playing the number of games he has played, you have good reason to be excited about it. But it's a, an area of the pitch that Rangers have needed to strengthen for a long time. It increases competition in that area. But there's a player there that you can build around um, for, for the long term. So if those two deals are the only two deals that are done, I think it is positive because these players are going to make an impact beyond this season. It's better than getting a couple more names in just now, but they don't have a tangible impact because they don't really make an impact between now and the end of the season and then they're gone. And and obviously the two players that we've referenced and that have arrived, Campbell and Raskin, um, are here for the long term. And I think that's a real uh, positive for Beal. Yeah, we've got uh, an amazing um, little bit of... Um... Uh, generosity there from Holtz1799 paid into the YouTube. So thank you very much for that. Yes, that's, uh, that's fantastic. Thank you very much. Very much appreciated um, your generosity there. Um, we've got a number of um, more comments. Everyone's kind of happy, Josh, just generally with the signing of uh, Raskin. You've got Joe 90 there saying overjoyed with Raskin. And you, and you have to say... Um, uh, the, the general feeling, I think, is very, very positive around the signing of this lad. And even though, if we if we're correct and we understand that we are, um, that, that, that there isn't any more last minute signings coming in. Uh, I think most people certainly, if the comments are anything to go by, are like you, Josh, pretty happy with what um, has been coming out of the club. A comment here from Lawrence Thompson, who says, "When are you getting a Rangers review at Lawrence?" Lawrence, great question, man. It's a great question. It's it something that question. we have been kicking up to the, the, the powers that be. Um, and I'm told it will be in April or May. It's not an easy process. It obviously has to be built to spec. And um, it's something that we are working on. But but unfortunately, uh, people who, who are in this industry are very busy at the moment doing these kind of jobs. So we are working on it. We're desperate to get one um, so we can get you guys properly connected because I know from myself when I'm reading the website when I'm on my day off and I want to see what Josh and Derek are doing um, it's much easier if you've got an app you can go on rather than kind of going into Safari or, or whatever your your Google or whatever whatever your browser is um, but um, it is, it's on the way it's just taking a bit more time than I think any of us are, are comfortable with so uh, yeah thanks for asking and, and that's something that, that we, we certainly were not going to drop it's it's coming it's just a question of hopefully coming a bit sooner rather than later if you're a doctor he's saying just subscribe to the channel so looking forward to reading your reviews in the coming weeks thanks for joining us fiona delighted to have you on board um this is an unusual time for us to come on we're normally on at half past nine every morning monday to friday so uh, you're welcome to join us then uh, and obviously fire in a comment if you've got any questions we'd be delighted to have a chat over the course of the videos that we're doing um, right, Josh, I think we're going to call it a day right there. I think we've done 45 minutes now. Um, I think we've answered a lot of questions. Top line stuff is that um, we've ruled out Rangers um, making a move for the Wigan defender that has been linked, um, Jack Watmo. We don't think that is going to happen. Now, I would caveat everything that we say by saying it's a transfer window. Anything can happen, but we don't think that's going to happen. Um the link between uh, uh, Alex Lowry and St Mirren is wrong. We can rule that out categorically. Um, we obviously are aware that Nicholas Raskin is signed for the club today. But as far as we are concerned, we believe that that is the last signing the club will make in this window unless something changes quite significant in the last few hours of the window. Um, just to reiterate, Josh, Michael Beale is happy with what he's got, isn't he? And um, he's looking forward um, to strengthening Rangers further in the summer. Yeah, um, yeah. to sum up, I guess this window, Johnny, was about <coughs> players for the here and now and the future as well. You never know uh, what can happen. Um, absolutely, things can things can obviously move. 
I guess the same goes for outgoings um, when you're talking about people like Lowry or, or James Sands based on the manager's press conference um, yeah, yesterday. Um, we won't know, obviously, until the window closes because uh, that is, that's is just how it goes. But I think two really exciting signings that, that really strengthen Beal's hand um, along with some players coming back into the squad. And uh, yeah, looking forward to a big game tomorrow away at Tyne Castle, which um, is kind of taking back seat because of the transfer window closing, but we'll obviously be looking back on the window tomorrow, whatever happens, and looking ahead to the game tomorrow night in Edinburgh. Hearts and Tyne Castle, never any less than exciting, Josh. Um, just before we go, I can knock down one last transfer rumour. Cole Palmer, Johnny, says Connor Fleming. Nope, not happening, Connor, unfortunately. Uh, that's uh, that's not one that's on the agenda. So, right, we can call it a day there, um, and uh, we can see, we will see you tomorrow morning, uh, where we'll discuss hearts in a bit more detail, what, what Rangers can accept, expect at Tynecastle, and who will likely start. Will Nicholas Raskin be thrown in at the deep end for his debut uh, at the Tynecastle um, bear pit? It's going to be interesting to see if that happens. I don't think it will, but we can discuss it further tomorrow. So, guys, I just want to thank you. Um, hopefully, if there's any more excitement in the transfer window, we'll be bringing it to you, obviously, on the website. And uh, we will hopefully see you tomorrow morning. Uh, 